Hi guys, my name is Itisha. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here or have been watching and enjoying the videos on this channel so far, show some love by hitting on the subscribe button down below. Today in this video, we are going to build a pop-up model using React and for styling it, we'll be using Tailwind CSS. So let me show you what all functionalities it is going to have. So we have this button called get the ebook and when the user clicks on it, we want the user to enter their email ID and then they can uh, click on the download button in order to get the ebook in their machine. So let me click on this one. And when the user clicks uh, here, enters their email ID and clicks on this download ebook button, the ebooks get downloaded. And when the user clicks on this cross icon, it, this model disappears. And also after clicking anywhere on the background itself, this model disappears. So this is what we are going to build. So this is one of the most common requirements in any web development project. So I thought I'll show you how to create this one. So without any further delay, let's get started. If you know what a pop-up model is, you can skip to the timestamp shown on the screen. Otherwise, let me give you a brief about what a model exactly is. So what you're seeing on the screen right now is nothing but a model. So in simple terms, uh, it is nothing but an element that overlays the main screen and it temporarily blocks the user from interacting with the main web page until a task is completed or cancelled. So this is what a model is. Now let's dive into the code and see how it needs to be built. So I've already set up a React project called React Pop-Up Model using Vite and I've also installed Tailwind CSS in it. If you are new to this and don't know how to set up a React project, you can refer to my previous video where I have done everything from scratch. Now let's head on to our app.jsx file. Let's see what all things we need to build. So as we can see here, there is a heading and then there is a button called get the ebook. And also in the background, there is a background color. So inside this div, I am going to have an H1, which says pop-up model and also a button which says get the ebook. Now let's start styling this. Since we want these two things in the center, so I'm going to use the flex column property, but first I'll give it a height of screen so that it spans over the whole height of the screen. And I'm going to use the flex column property and I'll give it our items as center so that it appears in the center of the screen horizontally. Since I want these two heading as well as this button to have some gapping, so I'll give it a gap of six and also I'll give it a background color. Now let's start styling this H1. So for this H1, since it's a bit bigger, I'll give it a text uh, size of 5XL and I'll keep the font as bold. Also, I want the text inside the button as well as this H1 to be in white. So instead of giving them individually, I'll give it here only. And also I'll give it a margin top of around four so that it's not really touching the top of the screen. Let's save it and see how it is appearing. So yeah, we can see that this is appearing fine. Let's start styling this button as well. So to this button, I'm going to give it a background. Let's give a background indigo of 500 and also I'll give it a PX of four PY of two and we want some border radius as well. So I'll give it a rounded of LG and a text of LG. Let's save it or rather I think uh, while it should look better. Yeah, we can see that now it is appearing fine. So the next thing that we need to create is when we click on this button, there should be a pop up model that should appear. So whenever we work in react, we usually create separate components whenever we want to create uh, more things on the main web page. So we are going to go inside the source folder and create a new folder called components. And I'll create a new component called model dot JSX. So I want it to be a functional component. So I'm going to use this shortcut called RFCE and save this one. Let's import this one in app.jsx. So I'm going to write import model from the components model and I'm going to show it over here and save it. So yeah, we can see that this model is appearing. Now, instead of having this just below this button, what we want that this model component should overlay the whole screen. So in order to do that, I'm going to go within my model.jsx file and I will give it some styling properties so that the background looks blurred. So I'll give it a class name. I'll first make it fixed and I'll give the inset as zero so that it covers the whole screen and top, left, right, bottom, everything is zero. And I'll give it a background of black. 
but I want to give it a blurry effect. So I'll first use a opacity of 30 and there is a property in Tailwind called backdrop blur SM. So this is what I'm going to use so that my background look blurred and I'm going to save this. Let's see how it is appearing. Yeah, we can see that now it is blurred and our text is appearing here. Now let's create this sort of thing that we want. So this type of model. So I'm going to remove this model from here and I'll create a div. The first thing that we want is a close button that is uh, kept on the top of the box that we want to create. So in order to get that icon, we are going to use Leucide React in here. So we will search for Leucide React and first let's install it via NPM. So I'm going to copy this, open my terminal and paste this one. Okay. Now, once this is installed, we can simply use it. So let's search for icons and I will search for close. Yeah, this is perfect. Let's see this in action and I am going to copy this. So this is called X in here. So first is going to be a button and this will have this icon. Yeah. After this, I will create a div inside which will have certain headings. So first is going to be a H1 which will say download free ebook and then we are going to have a p tag which says want to learn how to crack web development interviews like a pro and then after that we are going to have a form in which we have two things one is an input and second is a button so in the input we will give the type as email i'll give the placeholder as enter your email and I'll make it required so that until the person enters their email ID and then only they can uh, download the ebook because I want to store that person's information in my database. And then I'll create a button which says download the ebook. And before this, we also have an icon of download. So let's search for that as well. Yeah, this one is what we want. So I'll just get this here and I'm going to use it over here and I'll call it download ebook and save it. Okay, let's see how it is appearing. So yeah, we can see that all of the elements are appearing. We just need to style them better. So let's style them one by one. First, we want all of these items to be in the center. So I'm going to use the flex property. So I'll give it a flex justify center and items as center so that it appears in the center now we will uh, style this outer div i'll give it a margin top of around 10 and i want this button as well as this div to be one below the other so i'll use the flex column property and also i'll give it some gap of around five and i will keep the text as white now to this button i will increase its size so that it appears appears to be a bit bigger so I'll give it a size of 30 and to this button I want it to be on the rightmost side of the box that I want to create so I'll give it a place self end property let's see yeah now we can see that this button is appearing fine we just need to create this boundary or this background around this text so now to this outer div I'm going to give it a background of indigo of 600 and I'll give it uh, some border radius so I'll give it a border radius of Excel I'll give the px as 20 and py as 10 also I uh, I will give it a flex column property and use the gapping property that it provides and I'll keep the items in the center and I'll give the mx as 4 Okay, after this, uh, let's style this H1. So for this H1, uh, let's make its size a bit bigger. So I'll give it a text of 3XL and font of extra bold. To this P, uh, I'll give it the same text size. I think that should be good. I'll just make it less bold. So I'll give it just bold property. And I do not want this whole line to span uh, like to come in the whole line. I'll instead give it a max width property so that this line gets break broken into two. So or three maybe. So I'll give it a max width of MD and save this. Let's see. Yeah, now it's appearing fine. We just need to center align this one. 
so i'll give it a text of center yeah now it is fine let's style this form as well so to this input i'm going to give it a class name so i'll give it a width of full px of 4 py of 3 and i want the text that needs to be written inside it to be in black color not in white because i've given white to the outside div so that's why i am just writing text black additionally in here and i'll give it a border gray of 300 and rounded off md let's save it yeah now it is appearing better we just need to style this button as well so to this button i'm going to give it a margin top of four and a width of full i'll use my flex property and give it items center and justify center why i'm giving this flex property is because i want these two elements to appear side by side so that's why i'm using this and i want some gap in between the icon as well as this text so i'll give it a gap of two and i'll give the px as five py as three and i'll give it a font of medium rounded of md just like above and i'll give the background as black okay so let's save it and see how it is appearing yeah it's appearing perfectly fine now we have everything but there is a problem uh, we do not want to up make it appear all the time we only want to make it appear when we click on the button but since you know that this is a model and we have used some properties that's why it is uh, overlaying the whole screen and we are not able to access this button so in order to achieve that we will be using a state variable called show model which will handle the appearance of this model so let me create a state variable i'll call it show model and set show model uh, this i'm going to initially keep its value as false now we want that on click of this button this model should appear so on click we want to change uh, the value of this particular variable state variable to true so i'm going to use a callback function in here and call this function called set show model and set it to true and this model should only appear when this show model is true right so here i'm going to just uh, use this show model variable and user and so that when this is true only then this appears and save it okay now you can see that our model has disappeared and when i'm clicking on this get the ebook button then only this model is appearing so this is what we wanted to achieve right now we want to make it disappear as well uh, but when i'm clicking anywhere nothing is happening only when i'm clicking on this refresh then only it is disappearing but this is not what we want we want that we should enable these cross icon and also the background click so that it does disappears as well so how can we do that so for that we will have to create a we will have to pass in a function in our model so that when the user clicks on this cross button then also our this uh, show model value is set to false right so let's pass in a function in our model so i'll call it say on close and this is going to be nothing but a callback function which will set our show model to false right and now since we have uh, passed it as a prop we need to import it in our model as well so let me call this on close here and on click of this button so i'll add this on click i want to just simply call this on close and save this let's see now if it's working so let me refresh first click on this get the ebook according to uh, what we expect if we click on this cross this should disappear let's click on it fingers crossed yes now it is disappearing now the only thing that is left is when we click anywhere on the background as well this should disappear so we'll be again using our on close but in a different manner we first have to create a reference of this background so for that we'll be using use ref so i'll create a variable i'll call it model ref and use ref over here and i'll create a reference of it 
here so i'll use ref and use this variable that i've just created now i will create a on close function so that when the user clicks on this that or rather i'll call it close model so this close model function should be called now what we are going to write in this so i'll call it close model and there should be an event that it should capture and whenever our model reference dot current is equal to e dot target then only we want to call this on close function and save it i hope you are well versed with hooks that we have in react like use ref use effect if you don't know them already you can comment in the comment section down below i'll make a separate video on that so that you have all the basics cleared of react now we will save it and see if it is working so let me refresh click on this now if i click anywhere on the background you can see that it is disappearing and also you can check one thing if i'm clicking anywhere on this model nothing is happening either i am clicking on this cross or when we click on the background then only it disappears also if you don't add a prevent default in your on submit handler and then if you write any email and uh, click on this download ebook button then also this pop up model disappears so congratulations we have learned how to build a pop up model in react and you can see how easy it was also if you feel like there is some functionality additional functionality that you can add in here you can do that also i was recently creating a model for one of my clients where they had a specific requirement uh, simply like this wherein they wanted to have a input option wherein the they wanted to have the email of the user and also a download ebook button so on click of this button it should do two things at the same time one it should add the email to the database and also uh, after entering the email it should download the ebook on the user's machine so i struggle with it a bit but finally figured out the solution so if you want me to make a separate video on that because i did not encounter that problem in this particular video i can make a separate video on how you can download a pdf and uh, submit a form simultaneously uh, so you can let me know in the comments also you can let me know what type of videos you would like to see on this channel so that's all for this video if you like this video don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more such videos in future see you in the next one Thank you.